So chapter number two, PPP implementation and configuration. So we have two sub module here, which include the theory on PPP implementation and the configuration of PPP configuration. So let's look into the PPP introduction. PPP is a common WAN data link layer protocol. It's used for point-to-point -point data encapsulation and transmission on full duplex link. So if you are using two router connecting to each other, we call it as a point-to-point -point and uh, PPP will be typically used. PPP provides the password authentication protocol or we simply call PAP and Challenge Handshake Authentication Protocol or CHAP. These are the optional authentication protocol you can implement in PPP. PPP feature high extensibility. Uh, meaning of extensibility means that they can adapt to different type of media. For example, PPP can extend as PPPOE or we simply call as PPP smaller o than E uh, when PPP packet need to be transmitted over Ethernet. As you can see that PPP is very extensible. It not only can work on V.35, it also can run on Ethernet. So PPP provides a link control protocol, or we call it as a LCP, which is used to negotiate. Now, this is very important because later we are going to look into that, uh, which is the link layer parameters. Link layer parameters need to negotiate and the parameters they negotiate is the MRU or maximum received unit and authentication mode. So that is the role of LCP. So LCP is part of PPP. PPP provides various NCP or network control protocols. So besides LCP, we also have NCP such as IPCP for negotiation of network layer parameters and better support for network layer protocol. So I want you to remember that in PPP, we have the sub protocol called LCP, and we also have NCP. All right, so just remember that now, because we are going to look into more detail. So let's look into the PPP link setup process now. PPP link setup involves link layer negotiation and optional authentication negotiation. This is where it's important. Authentication is an optional negotiation, so it's not mandatory. And network layer negotiation. So here we have a layer 2 negotiation and we also have a layer 3 negotiation. Link layer negotiation, that is happened on the layer 2. LCP packets are used to negotiate link parameters and establish link layer connection. Uh, remember, this is where I mentioned the negotiating the MRU. Then we have an optional authentication negotiation. The authentication mode negotiate during the link layer negotiation is used for link authentication. So we have a uh, first step here is a link layer negotiation. Second step, which is optional, we have the authentication negotiation and finally we have a never layer negotiation we are using NCP to negotiate and uh, this is being used to select and configure a network layer protocol and negotiate network layer parameters so this is important layer number three network layer negotiation so in this diagram you can see that we have two devices R1 and R2 and the protocol that they are using here is the uh, PPP and for them to negotiate, they need to go through these three processes. Process number two is an optional, which is authentication. So let's look into the process on how PPP uh, negotiate. PPP negotiation is performed by interfaces at both end of the link. So which means that both end of the router connecting to the interface need to use PPP encapsulation. The interface status indicate the protocol negotiation phrase. So over here, they have this uh, status. So the first one is that when they first started is that. Okay, that is the status. Then when two of these router connected to each other, they become established. That's it. All right, so from that to establish, 
Now they go to the first step, which is the LCP. Remember, they end the LCP, they try to negotiate the MRU. So it depends on the condition, which is either it's success or not success. If it's not success, then it go back into that. But if it's a success, then they go to the second stage here. Do they require authentication? Remember, I mentioned that if authentication is required, then you have to authenticate. If the authentication is not required, so then you will actually go into the uh, network layer already. Okay, so the authentication is either using the PAP, PAP, or chat. If let's say the authentication is successful, authenticated, it will go to the network layer. If the authentication is not successful, then what will happen here is it will get terminated. So assuming that the authentication is successful, it will go into the network layer. This is where the IP control protocol will negotiate. So these are the three uh, process that we look into, link layer negotiation, authentication is optional, and finally we have a network layer uh, negotiation. Next, we look into the LCP packet format. If you remember on the first PPP connected, they'll go into negotiation on LCP or link control protocol. The protocol field in PPP packet identify the type of PPP packet. For example, if the protocol field is 0xc021, the packet is an LCP packet. So here, you can see that this is our uh, PPP packet. Inside the packet, we have a flag, address, control, and the protocol. And here, if your status is uh, C021, if you look into the C021, means that it is an LCP packet. The code field is further used to identify different type of the packet. So we have IP packet, IPCP packet, LCP, PAP, and chat packet. So we can use a Wireshark and look into the packet to determine what type of protocol that they are using through the protocol field. Then we also have an information field. In the information field, the byte here is between 0 to 1,500 byte, which contain the code and the code is important. We are going to look into this code later on. And then we also have the length and the data. In the data, we also have the type, length, value, type, length, value. So we call this as a TLV or type, length, value. So this is TLV. So the TLV structure contains common parameters used in TLCP negotiations such as MRU, authentication protocol and the magic number. So I want you to remember that all this process is in the LCP and in LCP, these are the parameters uh, that I mentioned earlier on, include MRU, authentication protocol and the magic number. So this is the LCP negotiation process during a normal negotiation. So we are going to look into uh, two negotiations. First, we look into the normal negotiation LCP negotiation is implemented by exchange different LCP packet. The negotiation is initiated by sending a configure request. You will still remember this is the code that we actually use in our LCP header packet from either party. If the peer and identify and accept all parameters in the packet, the peer return a configure acknowledgement. So we have configure request and configure acknowledgement to the local and indicating that negotiation is successful. So let's look into uh, this diagram. First, as you can see here, we have R1. The first step on R1 is to send a configure request code. So this configure request code is sent by R1. As you can see here, inside the parameters is contained the MRU, maximum receive unit. Authentication time is PAP, and they also have a magic number. There's nothing magic about the magic number. It's just a control number. So as you can see that when R2 receive it, it actually try to check will the router able to accept the MRU of 1005 PEP and they send back a magic number of B. So step number two, router B send a verify the parameters the peer and are valid. So router two, step number two here will send configure acknowledgement and at the same time, configure request. So once you, you can see here, we have the configure request and there's a configure request. Now router two requesting the same parameters from R1, 
R1 is going to acknowledge it. So you can see that the first step here is being acknowledged by router 2. So this is where we are using a uh, normal negotiation. So the negotiation is successful. What happens if let's say the negotiation there is some mismatch? So in this slide, we look into where the configuration itself is not acceptable. LCP parameter do not match during the packet exchange. The receive respond with configure NAK, negative acknowledgement packet to instruct the peer end to modify parameters and perform negotiation. As in previous slide, we have router 1 send the LCP, but this time the MRU is 2000 instead of 1005. So step number one is being sent. Router 2 upon receiving double check and see that hey I only can support a 1005 MRU so router 2 will send a configure NAK ACK to R1 now R1 is going to modify their MRU to match router 2 so here now R1 is going to go for step number 3 configure request with a configuration parameters modified now R2 will say that okay now with these new parameters i can accept so now you can see that we have configure request we have uh, configure nak we also have configure ack so what happens if let's say the configuration itself is unrecognized all right so in the third scenario here if LCP parameters cannot identify during LCP packet exchange, the receiver respond with configure reject. Okay, so now you have a configure request and configure reject. So rather than you do a NAK, now we actually use a reject. Reject in this case means that I totally cannot accept it. So let's look into step number one. Step number one. Uh, R1 send a configure request with this type of parameters and there's also have additional information that carry over R1 but when R2 receive it, you find that the parameters cannot be identified and perform parameters negotiation so this number over here is an additional parameters that R2 don't understand so R2 will going to send out a code of configure reject now when this information is being received by R1 R1 is going to resend a configure request that carry the negotiation parameters. You notice that this additional parameters has been removed and with this information is removed, R2 upon receive it is going to do a configure acknowledgement because right now I can understand your parameters. So these are different code on PPP. It's very simple. Just remember that they have a configure request and configure ACK if it's successful. If the parameters is understand, but the parameters is unacceptable, then I'm going to send a configure NAK. And if the parameters is unknown, then I'm going to send a configure reject.